What is going on? My name is BitWiseGuy. Today we are going to be looking at React.js, Office.js, and how they all work together. <laughs> so what I'm going to be doing first is I'm going to be scaffolding a brand new uh, Office add-in task pane, and we're going to be using React Framework for this one. Um, so if you haven't done that, just go ahead and quickly scaffold a new project. Um, and I will cut all this out, all of the actual downloading of the dependencies, um, and we'll be right back once this is completed. All right, so before we continue, um, I do need you guys to install a piece of software, which we're gonna be using for actually debugging our Office.js add-ins. Without this piece of software, debugging is exceptionally tedious. Uh, it's like pulling nails out of your eye that you already stuck into, which I don't know why you did that, but you know, it's pretty much like that. So what you need to do is open up the Microsoft Store and head over to um, here. And I want you to search for the Microsoft Edge DevTools. And you're going to choose the Microsoft Edge DevTools preview. And I've already got this installed, but essentially you're just going to install it from here. Um, and we're going we're gonna to be using this extensively throughout the tutorial series. We don't need it right this second, but um, please do have it installed while you're following along. All right, so basically let's just have a look at our imports first. So the first thing that I want you to notice is that um, Office.js add-ins by default with the React.js framework, uh, and I do believe even the AngularJS framework as well, uh, uses the Office UI Fabric React. If you don't know what the Office UI Fabric for React is, uh, although obviously the, it's not going to be using that for Angular, but I do believe it uses some version of Office UI Fabric. Uh, I will be placing a link in the description below as to the documentation on Microsoft's website um, for what that actually is. But essentially it is Microsoft's design framework. The next thing that we are importing is the application itself. Um, this will make a little bit more sense as to why it's not in here straight away. Uh, later on, but the next thing we're going to be looking at, and these two are directly related, is the app container and the app. Um, so we're using RHL, which is React Hotloader. If you haven't used React Hotloader before, I don't. I will put a link in the description for what React Hotloader is. Um, but it essentially allows us to uh, recompile our code on change so that we don't have to restart the whole dev server and all of that stuff. Um, so the app container itself is just a React.js uh, component um, and, it, and it's simply hosting the application itself. So that when we make changes to the application, uh, it gets reloaded without having to reload the dev server. Uh, the next thing that we have is the icons. So the React, uh, sorry, the Office UI fabric for React comes with a bunch of icons. Um, these have to be initialized as they come from a CDN. Um, this actually takes a, a, para a custom parameter if you wanted to host the uh, icons yourself. You can actually pass uh, the CDN for that style sheet into there yourself. Uh, the next two things are just React and React DOM. If you haven't used those before, uh, this is not a React.js specific tutorial. Um, so I'd recommend checking out the hundreds of other really great videos on React.js just to kind of understand what that is. Um, so the next thing that we have to understand is this thing. And this this is a massive gotcha for beginners and advanced developers uh, in the React.js world alike. So. Let me pull up a uh, let me pull up a paint window because we're gonna do this old school and I'm gonna explain to you why that this variable exists and how critically important that it actually is. Okay, so I thought for this actually best that we dive into something like Lucid Charts, uh, just so that I can actually describe to you without boxes and stuff all over the place. Okay, so. Essentially, in an Office.js application, we have three components. Uh, we have the host application, uh, which in this demonstration is the Microsoft Word application, uh, and we call this the host. On the right-hand side, we have the React.js framework, or the Re React.js application. And in the middle of that, we have the Office.js API. Now, fundamentally, uh, the problem that this uh, is Office initialized variable is trying to solve is it is trying to notify React.js uh, when the host application is actually ready to start communicating with React.js. <clears throat> the reason that this mechanism actually needs to exist is because the host application and the Office.js API uh, live outside of live outside of the React.js lifecycle. So essentially, what that means is that React.js is completely unaware of the state of the both the host application. 
uh, and the OfficeJS API at all times. And the only way that it knows uh, is via the binding mechanism, which I'm about to show you in a second, uh, which sets the uh, global uh, variable from uh, false to true when the host application and the uh, API are ready. So let's jump back into our code and let's actually have a look at that. All right, so the first bit of code that we have to focus on here, which comes from the UMAN generator, is this office.initialize. Now, this function, uh, which we are actually setting up here, uh, is called by the host application uh, once everything is finished initializing. So if we look at the description here, it says that it occurs when the runtime environment is loaded uh, and the add-in is ready to start interacting with the application uh, and host the document. So essentially what they're saying is that once the host application, whether that's Microsoft Word, Microsoft PowerPoint, Outlook, whatever it is, uh, and whatever its definition of completely initialized is, whatever that, whatever that is, the last call that it makes is to this function here. And it does that through uh, the Node.js uh, interface that it has. So you don't need to worry about too much how it makes that call, but essentially the last call that it makes is, is, is to this office.initialize function. Uh, and they make us basically define what, that, what happens once the uh, application is initialized. So the normal thing to do in that case is since we are using a React.js application uh, and we want to know, we want to be for sure uh, certain that, for example, when our component mounts and does something that has side effects, say it grabs some text from uh, the document or, you know, it does a lookup on the currently logged in user in Outlook or whatever it is that it, it might be doing, uh, it, it has to be certain that uh, those values actually exist. And this is the standard mechanism for doing that. So we, so we say the callback is this, uh, we said is office initialized true, and then we call this render function. So what is this render function? Well, this render function is defined up here, uh, and it takes a parameter of component. Uh, it shoves it inside of our uh, React hot load app container. Uh, it then actually renders our component with a title, which is used uh, later on down in the JSX tree. Um, and it passes in this is office initialized. Now, this is where we start merging uh, the lifecycle methods and state of React.js with this kind of asynchronous um, global, is it loaded, is it not loaded, you know, problematic system that they have. That's not a very technical explanation, but it is essentially what is going on. So we're, we're, we're essentially saying, hey, Office, uh, are you ready for me to interact with you with React.js? If you're fully initialized, this will be set to true. Uh, and then we can actually you know, do things uh, inside of our React.js application uh, without fear of you know, having a race condition, which is essentially what this is preventing. So on a technical level, this is preventing a race condition. In the next video, we are going to be looking at the context object. Uh, the context object is kind of the beating heart of the OfficeJS API. Um, and it is a really important concept to understand. So uh, please do like and subscribe my videos. I know they're coming out a little bit slow. I've just been so, so busy with work and, and other related things. Um, but uh, do check out the next video on the context API as it's going to really help you get started uh, with building, you know, OffJS applications. Uh, in the next video with the context API, we're going to be downloading some data from a sample API and we're going to be inserting it into the Microsoft Word uh, document. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I love you all. Uh, I hope you're having a good weekend and I will see you soon.